The Sons and Daughters Podcast. Discover and walk in the life that Jesus lives inside of you. Hosted by Andy and Tina Hayner, leaders of Full Speed Impact Ministry. Hi, welcome to the Sons and Daughters Podcast. I'm Tina Hayner. And I am Andy Hayner, Tina's lovely husband, and we are <laughs> leaders of the Full Speed Impact Ministries. We are excited that you're with us because this podcast is devoted to encouraging you to understand, to know your identity in yes. Christ, to walk in His fullness and to impact the world. And we have a special guest that is really uh, a great example of all those things. Yes. A good friend of mine, Margaret Wysoon, mm. uh, she and I met several years back when I was doing a conference and she came to the conference and after some of my teaching sessions she came up to me and she was asking so does all this stuff about Jesus healing the sick and and uh, healing through us does that apply to even birth defects and I said yeah, remember, because Jesus healed those that were born, born blind, blind and born, born deaf, deaf and born yeah, lame. Absolutely. That, you know, just because someone's born that way doesn't mean that's mm. the way God wants it's them. It's still an affliction. Right, not, that's part yeah. of, I mean, we're born sinners. That's right. <laughs> doesn't needs mean, to be taken care of. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, and uh, it was funny. I thought she was learning. She was actually vetting me. <laughs> <laughs> she was testing. What does this guy really yeah. believe? Yeah. yeah. And uh, we can. We continued to keep in touch and mm -hmm. uh, we actually co-authored a book uh, together uh, called God mm -hmm. Heals Birth Defects um, and she has packed that book with it's about 50 percent testimonies Testimony. of mm -hmm. what God has already done um, and a biblical foundation for uh, that she wanted released prior to seeing genetic healing mm -hmm. uh, they've seen all kinds of symptoms healed all kinds of, of birth effects mm -hmm. uh, healed mm -hmm. Um, but they're believing God for okay. actual genetic healing yeah. for mm -hmm. children that were born with uh, chromosome defects. Mm -hmm. um, and that's amazing to me. Mm -hmm. Her, uh, her ministry is called mm -hmm. Team Avalanche. Mm -hmm. uh, she's written another book, a devotional, uh, Pep Talks for Mountain Movers. Mm -hmm. And she is, pep she is a pepper person, for, yeah. uh, and a mountain mover. Paper, yeah. And yeah. Uh, we're really ha glad to have her with us today. But I think one of the things that will be inspiring for people to know is that you didn't start off this mighty <laughs> woman of God that was moving mountains. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about how this journey of understanding who you are in Christ and the, uh, the how that relates to healing the sick began right, for right. you? Well, thank you, Andy and Tina. First of all, I, Will and I and so many parents around the world just thank the world of y'all. We really appreciate what you've done and what you're doing. Um, to encourage and exhort us in the truth. So thank you. And thank you for this opportunity. Um, yeah, our pleasure. Uh, well, first of all, um, let me just say that if there's any anything worthy uh, about me, it is just Jesus. I, um, I would not pick me to do a lot of the things that I have done. I would definitely think there would be other qualified people, but that's because is Jesus who's qualified. And so I just give all the glory and praise to him. And I'm really excited about what's coming and what I've experienced. And like you said, the revelation that the Lord has been so good and gracious to me, but I also want to say that um, when my husband <laughs> used to say, hungry people think of bread. Well, when you get hungry enough, mm -hmm. that's what you're thinking about. And that's really what happened to me. Um, my story began on the healing journey. Um, my husband, I've been married for 30 years. And when we were first married, I, um, you know, we knew that he was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis and, um, I can hear him in the other room. Anyway, praise Jesus. God is so good. So anyway, so it was started out as ulcerative colitis, then it went to liver failure, then polyarthritis, um, then um, then the whole colon just got infected and ruptured, so he had a whole colon removal, and he had gangrene that went systemic, and kidney failure, kidney transplant, four-stage lymphoma. I mean, it's it's really kind of ludicrous, you know, what we've been through. But sometimes the devil just overplays his hand, and I do give complete credit to the enemy for all the trauma 
um, with my husband's help. And um, because John 10, 10 says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we know that that is where it originated from. But I didn't know that. I did not know that for 20 mm. years. So for 20 years, I just thought that I was extremely amazing to have all this traumatic stuff going on in my life. And that I must be, the Lord must be teaching me a lot of amazing things. And that, uh, you know, mm. I believed, so I actually thanked God for it. And then there came a time um, where I had a pastor pray for me. And this was an assistant pastor at one of the towns we lived in. He said, well, let me just pray for you. Lord, keep this on her and her family until they learn what it is that you want them to learn. And that was a tipping point for me. I, I had never had anybody else talk to me the, that way. And I thought, I will never call this person ever again. And that can't be God. And there must be something better. So I, um, mm. as, as time went on, it still got worse. It literally got worse. And so I, um, I still thought that I was something special that, you know, that I must, and I, and one of my best friends who I was friends with since I was five years old, she and I grew up really close. Then we roomed together for four years, lived together for two years after we were, um, graduated from college. And, um, only marriage separated us. Mar she married her sweetheart. I married my sweetheart. And, and I always looked at her life and I thought, you know, there's nothing ever dramatic. And now I look back and I think, mm -hmm. holy cow, that woman just stayed so close to the Lord and, you know, stayed so close to the truth that she didn't get off into the weirdness of thanking God for all the drama. But anyway, hmm. I and that's what you were taught, apparently, that, you know, that if if God is giving you all these trials and all these sickness, it must be because he really, really has loves you and has something you. special. Mm, and and we're, there's a lot of people that are told mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's just not the way that Jesus talked to people mm -hmm. when they came to him for healing. Uh, that's not how he says, oh, you're very blessed. Just keep that healing. He never oh. prayed, God, keep it on them. And that whole idea of that, that it's from him. Right. I mean, that's just, you know, again, we know now, but so, yeah, so yeah. how did that unravel for you? Okay. So, um, so, well, let me just prep, let me say this one last thing on that. I had a pastor tell me one time, two, two pastors tell, tell me one time healing happens three different ways. Um, it happens instantly over time or at death. And I just received that. I believed it. And until I really thought about the at death part, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> they, like, that's not even smart. Because if you're dead, you, your body still has that disease. So, but I, I was just so, so fooled into believing that. But then our, we, my husband and I have been so blessed with five amazing children. And when our fifth child was born and diagnosed with a birth defect, I... That was, that was a crossroads. I told my husband, I said, I, I don't want to be a Christian anymore if healing isn't true and if it isn't reliable. You know, if it's random and you just have to be in the right place at the right time with the right person, you don't know how many crusades I went to before our fifth child was born, how many places I went to get a man to heal my husband, to change my life and still, you know, carry on and soldier on through it. And so when, she, when our fifth child was born, um, it was in November of um, 2009. And my husband and I made an agreement that if we could not understand this, I said, if I don't understand this, I'm not going to be a Christian. And so we made an agreement that we would figure it out. And so it took literally three years. So what I did was we were in a mainstream denomination. And so healing was really random. Lord, if it be your will, you know, so what is God's will? So I took the Bible and, and then I started calling all these healing ministries that I thought they were way out in left field. And I thought, man, they've fallen off the wagon of truth. But I decided to call them around the world and write them and get in touch with them and find out, hey, how, what is biblical healing and how does it work? Is it random? What is the will of God? But then I also took the Bible and my first question was, what is the will of God? And um, I just want to interject this. I had a really dear friend today text me, and they just got a, um, a bad report on one of their children. 
and she's a good friend. And she said, I need some encouragement. And I was like, okay. So I just went online and started blowing up her phone with healing testimonies. And I was like, God's no respecter of person. Jesus said so, you know, just tell just. And so I blew up her phone and, you know, we, we have to base what we believe on the word of God not our experiences, but our, but these, you know, testimonies tell of the truth, but going back to what that truth is. So I started to write a book. I was like, I'm going to write this book. And on that November in 2009, I was like, I'm going to write it down. I'm going to chronicle this. And if it's not true, I'll have journaled it. I'll have gotten it all into book form and I'll be able to say, it's not true. I've got proof. And then if it is true, I'll, I'll have written a book And I'll be able to chronicle the changes and chronicle the truth of what the word of God says. So either way, I was going to have a book that proved healing was legit or healing was a lie. And that there was no point in believing that. And I've still got that book, but I've Hmm. tweaked it a little bit through those three years. It's amazing um, what I figured out. And Andy, you know, you and Tina were a part of that. It was almost like, well, the last chapter is written. There's Andy and Tina. So I mean, like I had contact, personal contact with the people that believe. It was almost like the sprinkles on the top of the cake <laughs> meeting y'all. Um, but anyway, so that's how it happened. That was the journey when I found out and understand. I knew for so many years that prayer was such an integral part of the believer, and so I had prayed. Um, for other people to be healed unsuccessfully. So when I found out that they were all, that we are already healed, I started to go and pray for people. Um, immediately, I went and prayed for two people diagnosed with cancer. They were healed um, within a month. There was no more cancer. It's probably when they're that moment, but they got mm-hmm. a doctor's report within both of them right away that it was no longer there and just was on a mission of mercy. You know, so so explain that just a little bit for any of our listeners who may actually be going through some of this journey. Yeah. Um, what did you discover about the will of God? How did you, you said, you know, when I discovered we're already healed. Why, why don't you explain a little bit of that? Because that was so integral for you. Um, you know, during those three years, what truths did you discover right. that really, you know, because... It, it, your story could have been different if you, you know, you we, you could be writing a book about why healing's not real and the Bible can't be trusted, and, and I'm not a Christian. Um, but here you are leading a international ministry um, to mobilize parents who are believing God for uh, mm-hmm. healing mir- miracles for their children. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, I'd love to hear some of of what God showed you during that time. That's a good question, and that's an exciting journey in itself, but. First, before I say any more, I do want to say this, that our, what we believe is not based on our experience. We base what we believe on the Word of God. That is Amen. to surviving <laughs> right. any test of your faith. If you're believing by what you see, it's going to be a rocky, tumultuous, not mm. successful, and very painful journey. And so we believe what we believe based on the Word of God. Not okay not what we see. So that, um, so the first thing that I experienced and came to understand was our dominion, our, uh, the place of dominion. I did not understand healing for, it really took almost the entire three years, but can I tell the ant story? I know everybody probably knows that story, but (laughs) not our listeners do it. Yeah. Let me tell you about, okay, now mainstream denomination and my husband and my, our children had lived in this house for a while and we had this problem with fire ants. And so we had used the expensive fire ant killer that you get at the local hardware store. And we had, my kids had done some awful torturous things like boiling water or grits, you know, just some various because it was right along where our kids played and our pat our, our right. front door. Now, just for anybody who's never been in the southeast where there are fire, fire ants, <laughs> imagine ants that can sting you. That's what That's fire our, ants yeah. are. Go ahead, mm-hmm. Morgan. Thank you. <laughs> that, these ants like, deserve these, these ants deserve, deserve to, to be tortured. <laughs> <laughs> 
I honestly don't think they'll be in heaven. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but we'll find out. But they're bad. It feels like fire. Well, so I found out in Genesis, I think it's 126, 127, that he's given us dominion over every creature that crawls on the earth, the birds of the air, every creature. So I thought, well, I believe that. And I'm going to apply this to these fire ants. So there are these mounds of ants. They're, they're pretty big mounds. And I told, um, I went outside and I, I looked around to make sure nobody could see me. <laughs> and tell anybody what I was doing and I went out there and I said I believe the word of God remember that's how this works I believe that I had dominion over these fire ants I just didn't want anybody to see me talking to the fire ants so I went out there and I said now listen I have dominion over you I do not want you to be here you're going to have to pack up and move and leave my yard I have dominion over you according to the word of God so you have to leave and then I looked again, I literally looked again to make sure none of my neighbors saw me. And then in less than a week, it might have been just a couple of days, the, the fire ant, you could just rake your fingers through the fire ant mounds. There were no fire ants. They were gone. Wow. And I ran inside and I grabbed the first child that I could find, which was our oldest child at the time. And I took him out there and I was like, they're gone. Like, this is what I did. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> And and they're gone. And his response was, "We should be. We should go into the extermination business. We would have no overhead." That's what he said. <laughs> no, you know, they knew that it had been a journey to get rid of these fire ants. But you know, I figured that if we had dominion over the fire ants, the things that creep along the earth, that we also would have dominion over bacteria and viruses. So I applied that to sore throats and cold symptoms, and um. And then it was working. And I would tell my kids, don't tell anybody this, okay? But <laughs> if you get a sore throat, you, don't, you can deal with it on your own. You've got dominion over bacteria and viruses. And just go into the bathroom and tell it, I do not want you here. I command you to go. I have dominion over you. And I command you to drop and die and disappear and get out of my body. And so we had success in that journey and um, with that. So, but then, you know, the trials along the way were pretty hard. You're going to be put to the test it's the faith test and that, you know, you've got to know that, you know, that, you know, this is nothing to play around with. And so you always go back to the Bible. We're not going to base this on our experiences. We're going to base this on what the word of God says. So about the three year mark, I got into the place where I was understanding what Jesus did. And I really investigated the whipping post that before he got to the cross, he stayed at the whipping post by the stripes of Jesus. You, uh, in Isaiah 53, it says, you are healed. But in 1 Peter 2, 24, it says, you were healed. And mm -hmm. it's referring to the fact that what he did at the whipping post was he was beaten and bruised for our sickness. And it's in the Bible. It's undeniable. Um, McCormick, is, it, is that the guy, McCormick, the guy that wrote the book, um, about the healing and the atonement T.S. Mm -hmm. okay i'm butchering the name yeah no i've i've read that book too and i can't remember the name really good he was a presbyterian examiner and um and he was he understood greek and hebrew really well he actually tested in the the seminary graduates and that and he he said you either don't believe that jesus heals for two reasons one you're ignorant or two, you you know, you're just denying the truth. You're not telling mm -hmm. the truth. And so it's in the Bible. And when I found out that he had already healed us, then these symptoms would be violation of truth. And we would just speak to them um, in the name of Jesus um, because they were illegal. It's a legal issue um, that they that, that they are there. And the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets us free from the law of sin and death. So there's mm -hmm. no excuse. There's no, there's no way back door to validating sickness on a human. And mm -hmm. this means any human, it's not just Christians. It's any human. He did it for everybody. Mm -hmm. And so when you referred to the theologian who wrote that book, one of the things that he studied out that the word healing, that by his stripes, you were healed 
it it pertains specifically to physical mm-hmm. sickness. A lot of times Christians these days will will be taught, well, that means he heals you spiritually. emotionally and spiritually. Takes away and your sins. Takes away your mm-hmm. sins um, right. to make you less defective right. you know, spiritually. We've also got the passage in Matthew 8 that right. where it says... It refers to that passage sure. in Isaiah that right there in the gospel it says he healed them all. And and this is to show, to prove Isaiah 53. Right. And <laughs> it's it was true. physical healing and mm-hmm. casting this is what out it was demons. referring to. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. yeah. Can, can I say something about that? Yes. I recommend if you're not, if you don't know that, you know, that, you know, that that is referring to physical healing, that you go to blueletterbible.org, I believe. And you can look in the Strong's Concordance. You can look up the original Greek and the original Hebrew in Isaiah 53 and 1 Peter 2.24. And it will cross-reference other verses that have the words that mean the same thing. Right. So you will be able to validate what we're saying through the Right. Yeah. No, it's really good. You know, even as a believer, as I was learning healing, um, One of the things that God spoke to me about was that faith comes by the Word of God. A lot of times people believe they're healed because they believe their bodies. Mm -hmm. And so instead of believing the The Word, word the faith looks one place to see if we're healed. And it looks in the Bible, and the Bible says, by God's Word, I am healed. Mm -hmm. We were healed. And so we exercise faith in that, not not just believing our bodies. So that's that's why sometimes people can get healed by someone else's faith and then revert back because they they never had their own faith. Um, and so if they get attacked again, they their, their point of reference mm-hmm. never switched mm-hmm. from believing their body to believing their word, the Word of God. They continue to believe their body. Now they just think they're healed and they're excited for a couple of days and then they get hit with that attack again and then they're like oh you know i didn't get it you know because they're believing their body but i like what you said that's so important just mm-hmm. to believe the word you have to believe your the word of god over experience because that's what will change your experience to make it look like the word of god <laughs> right 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 that's good that's good yeah you got to be convinced and 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 honestly i believe we're at a time in history where we need to know this on our own. We don't need to be dependent on a specific healing ministry or ministry right. plan. But, but God really needs us to wake up and walk in this truth because there's so many people that you know, you're going to see or I'm going to see that nobody else is going to see mm-hmm. that we can help. You know, that's really good. Um, you mentioned how you, um, I think probably you had to believe in healing, but you were going to a lot of crusades. And I think there's a lot of Christians who would fall into that category. I believe in healing. Mm-hmm. It's just not my gift. Right. Um, how would you address that? Because there is in the scripture something called the gift of healing or mm-hmm. gifts of healings. Um, how do you help believers f- um, contend f- with their own faith for for healing rather than simply <clears throat> all always depending on someone else. How did that happen for you? Yes. Well, the Word of God, first of all, the Word of God. Second of all, well, let me just, uh, you know, this verse keeps popping up in my mind the, in John where it talks about Jesus said, um, the works that I do, you also will do and greater. And it, and mm. it refers to it as the believers. Mm. And if you go back and study that verse, I believe it's in 15 or, or 14. I have to look it up. And I turned my mm. phone off, so I can't do a quick search. But um but anyway, so we're supposed to be able to do the same works that Jesus did and, and greater. And then as far as answering your question, um, can you say that question again? Right. How did you come to the point of of standing for, and contending for healing yourself? Yeah. Um, and, you know, because there's some people who believe in healing, mm-hmm. but they just don't believe that's their gift. And so they discount a lot of standing and exercising their own faith. Yeah. How did you make that switch and how do you help others make that switch? That, that was super easy for me because nobody that I knew at the time believed that genetic healing was a disease. So I didn't have any resources. Well, that's actually not true. There, There is this amazing woman of God in Charleston, South Carolina. And um, 
But when you go to, when you go and experience somebody who does have faith, because that's what it is, who does have faith for, for healing, whatever the disease is, are they, are you going to take them home with you? Are you going to have them in your house? You know, because it says in the word of God that um, to doubt, doubt and unbelief are sins. And mm. so you, it's a tricky spot when you're believing for something that maybe nobody around you is believing for. The enemy has high antennas on you. <laughs> you know, mm. you go ahead and put a, put a target on your back. You know, I'm open <laughs> game because you cannot, you've got to learn it for yourself or it's going to be really challenging. And, you know, I personally have been in a situation where nobody else believed. My husband and I believe nobody else that we knew believed. And so mm-hmm. this woman lived about two and a half hours away and I would see her once a month. So you've got to have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. You know, he actually, in, in those early days, he spoke to me. I was reading the parable of the sower. And when I was reading that parable, it says that the, the way that the seed gets stolen is through Um, various ways trials and tribulations will come along and try to steal that seed because the seed is a word and the word says that by the stripes of Jesus you're healed so you can hear all this you want today but I can tell you right now if you read the parable of the sower it's it says the enemy is going to come and try to steal that seed Mm. And, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and I was so amazed that he would talk to me but he will talk to any of of us that he will and he told me he he called it a mandate that parable was a mandate and a mandate and this authoritative command to get to understand it, to get mm-hmm. this understanding because it says that understanding will guard that seed and keep that seed. But mm-hmm. when you don't have understanding, then it quickly can be stolen. You can be super excited about this word. And then, then it's it, just read that parable. That parable mm-hmm. really explains why you need to get understanding on your own. Right. Absolutely. I mean, it's going to be tested. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're going to face persecutions. You're going to face the, uh, you you could get distracted and decide, you know, you're not just hungry for it. You're not going to go after it and stay focused on it. Um, Or you can hold it fast with an honest and good heart Mm -hmm. and be fully immersed in it and uh, expect seeds to bear fruit Mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. They don't, you don't plant one day and bear fruit the next day. (laughs) And I think a lot of times Christians, they may start off on getting convinced that, you know, the kingdom of God lives in me, Jesus lives in me, and he hasn't changed his lifestyle. He's still healing the sick. He's come to change my lifestyle. So uh, they start off maybe beginning to minister, but then they they hit some roadblocks. They don't see an instant healing. Uh, maybe other, maybe their family or their friends make them feel stupid or crazy um and then they they can get discouraged i'm sure you've probably faced discouragement you've ministered a lot with a lot of parents that have looked to you for mm-hmm. encouragement how do you uh, help yourself how do you stir yourself up how, what have you learned about uh to, to stay on the path and keep pressing forward well first of all um you know, David said, early in the morning, I'm going to seek you. And, you know, I, I think it's really important to set our, um, take one day at a time and that day to, to spend time with the Lord and just hear what he has to say to you through the word. And you talk to him, cast all your cares on him and make sure that he is your anchor. And then I would suggest lots of worship and dancing and chocolate and <laughs> and laughter mm-hmm. and i would focus on the fact that god is faithful and regardless of what it looks like it isn't up to you. it's not it's not going to be it's not like he's trying to decide if if you're going to get healed or your child's mm-hmm. going to get healed he's not up there saying well look what she did yesterday or look what she did today or you know maybe we're just going to wait for the right timing No, if he said it, it's the truth. It's okay to have a great life in the midst of believing for something that seems, you know, really challenging. That's okay. 
have a great life. This is a journey. You know, when it's over and we're in heaven, it's too late to have faith. It's too late to look back and say, you know, I probably could have enjoyed that day more or I could have enjoyed that relationship more or I could have spent less time worrying and more time just loving the fact that God decided to create me and bless me so much. So I would say count your blessings. You know, I, this is from that, um, I, I don't know. I think it's it just uncomplicate the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm worried and I can't sleep. I count my blessings, you know, count your blessings. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, there are so many resources of amazing people that have gone before us. You two are included in that. There are lots of resources. The word of God is your number one. That is a, you know, you want to hear, and I've heard other people say this. You want to hear God speak to you. Just open the Bible and read it out loud. Make Mm. them number one. And then he didn't leave us here to solo. We've got the body of Christ. And so Mm -hmm. we've got lots of resources to encourage us as well. Amen. Well, before we get going, you had mentioned that you just threw out a ton of testimonies to your friend that needed encouragement. We would love to hear some of the things that God is doing um, through your ministry. And, uh, you know, even if it's not been recent, uh, you know, we love to hear the recent stuff. But just what's been happening? What have you been seeing God do? Okay, that's exciting. Okay, well, (laughs) so I'll just throw out a couple. So, you know, um, so we've had uh, several hearts that were healed. Um, the holes just miraculously closed. And then we've had genetic heart healing where it was a hole, but it was also some type of genetic um, defect that was miraculously. Like a deformity of some sort. Mm-hmm. or a, right. right. And we've got Crazy. that testimony, I think, on, on the blog, healings, uh, Healing for Chromosomes. Blogspot.com. Mm-hmm. And then we have had oh my gosh we have several kids meeting milestones that were diagnosed with a birth defect and we have a healed autism and we have a healed cerebral palsy in india thank you jesus and we have um some you know personally um in my family do you want testimonies for the kids or can i tell you some other testimonies yeah that's fine you know you mentioned so much about your husband at the beginning of the program i think it'd be great to hear (laughs) that you know what happened with Mm him well let me tell you this too on this team of parents we have several parents that have raised the dead several parents that have um paid for people that are healed of cancer um It's really cool, you know, just the ordinary parent who, just the mommies and the daddies. But my husband, I was telling him about today and being with y'all, and he said, well, he mentioned a couple of the miracles with with himself. One one interesting, and I'd like to tell this testimony just as encouragement as well. So he had a hernia. You know, I mentioned all the gut surgeries, and it was quite Mm -hmm. traumatic. But anyway, when he was going through the fourth stage lymphoma, he all of a sudden got this horrendous hernia and the doctor said, well, you got to have to have surgery. And it was right in the front of his belly. And it was, I mean, it was a pretty big hernia in his belt, in his stomach. And, um, and she said, we'll have to have surgery, but you'll have to wait till you, you know, you're not dealing with cancer. And so I told Will, I was like, we're not doing any more surgery. It's over. This cancer is over and this hernia is gone. And so every morning I would lay hands on him and I I didn't pray for very long. I just said, um, stomach muscles, I command you to mend in Jesus name. Hernia, I command you to go in Jesus name. And then I would just release life and I would depend on the word, on the, on Jesus, the Holy Spirit, you know, for, for this word to be active and living. If he said it, then it's active and living. And I did this for about two months. And then guess what happened? It he, went back. He was healed. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing happened. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and so this is a really great encouraging testimony because nothing happened. And it wasn't even like a part. It, was, it wasn't even partially better. It was no better. And, and so I thought, I thought to myself, this isn't working. And I literally had that thought, this isn't working. And then my next thought was, well, 
it is working because it's the word of God. So you just don't say that. So I never said it. And then about two weeks went by and I just did the same thing. Stomach muscles, I command you to mend in the name of Jesus. Hernia, I command you to go in the name of Jesus. And then I would just release life. And, and anyway, and then after two weeks, it was like gone, just gone. It was there. And then it was gone. Praise and God. we have a report on that. The doctor said, well, you don't need surgery anymore because there's no more hernia. And so, um, and then my husband had no more cancer. I think it took like 16 weeks or 15 weeks. And I told the doctor, I said, have you ever seen a miracle? <laughs> I was like, you know, she kind of looked at me like, y'all look intelligent, but <laughs> you, know, you know, you're not really asking any questions. And I saw the PET scan. He had it in his, he even had it in his nose bone, his cranium, his toe bones, his sternum. It was in every bone, every organ. It was throughout his entire body. And I told the doctor, I said, I, and I would get there to the hospital during the nurse changes so they wouldn't give him morphine for the pain. And this was down at MUSC in Charleston. And we had that woman that I referred to, you know, we had a, people praying and really speaking life over his body. But I would get there in between, in between the changes of nurses. And I would, um, in the name of Jesus, get that pain off of him so we could have a conversation. And then... But within, I think it was approximately 16 weeks, they did another PET scan and it was complete. He, he was completely cancer free and we both knew it would never come back. Mm -hmm. and, and he was not going out like that. And, you know, God, God is no respecter of person. He is, he's the same yesterday, today and forever. And regardless of what it looks like, if he said it, we can go to the bank with it. And, you know, I'm mm -hmm. standing here. And I'm believing for some things that people are thinking, why are you still standing? Why are you still believing this? You know, oh, she's just unique because she believes this. No, I'm unique because uh, God made us all unique, but we believe God. It doesn't mm. have anything. It has to do with God. He's faithful. Right. It's his word. Yeah. I love that testimony. Yeah. You know, it's really neat that you, how you said nothing, nothing. changed for two <laughs> months, but then you you had the idea come to you that, that it wasn't working, but rather than choosing Testify. to abandon your mm -hmm. faith or speak that out, you just continued on. No, it is working. And then with no warning, it just went. Mm -hmm. it's, it reminds me a lot of Jericho. You know, they as they are walking around, it doesn't look like anything's happening. Even to the sixth time around on the sixth day, it doesn't look like anything's happening. Then the trumpets blow and whap. Everything mm -hmm. that that walk of faith that was required was completed. And I'm excited about you because you're encouraging a lot of believers to carry on that walk of faith mm -hmm. until they see the finished work mm -hmm. take place. Oh, I want to mm -hmm. say this real quick. It's interesting that you brought up the walls of Jericho. Last night, um, the same lady that I referred to, she said that. She said, mm -hmm. there is a point in your faith where it's walking around the walls of Jericho. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I've never been a quiet person, so I've been yelling around the walls of Jericho for several years. But y'all, we're going to see it not because of us, but because of Jesus. Well, we believe it. We bring faith to the table. Mm -hmm. And that is very, that's that's paramount. But mm -hmm. it is a leap of faith. It's not a, it's not a, a tea party. You know, it's a leap of faith. Sure. But it's mm -hmm. leaping into his arms, and we know who he is, right. and we know his heart, we know his power, we know his authority, uh, and we know that he has called and commanded us to do the same works that he does. And that's what believers are. We, He, he told us that whoever believes in him. So that's a good word mm -hmm. for everyone who's listening. If you're listening, you are a whoever, right. and uh, this Jesus is for you too. believes he can do his works through, through you. you. That's right. Yeah. So... Uh, that's exciting. Margaret, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate you. We know you've got so much more that you could share. Um, you're a you're mighty encouragement in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And um, if anyone would like to uh, connect uh, with Margaret, we encourage you to, to get her books. They're available through Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, actually, she's, she's actually pretty busy. And so if you want to hook up with Team Avalanche, that is reserved strictly for parents and grandparents 
Christians um, that have read those books and that are ready to join in with a group of people fight and contending for healing for their children or grandchildren. Um, and so there's actually a Facebook group uh, that you can connect with there. And there's a little bit of vetting that goes on because uh, we want to protect Margaret and keep that momentum going on their teams. But we really appreciate mm -hmm. you encouraging us. You're Thanks. such a blessing. Well, I love Thank you guys. You. Thank you for the opportunity to share and God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Wow. You know, she is just such an encouraging uh, person and, mm -hmm. you know, just to, um, for someone, uh, there's words that she says that are encouraging, but just um, for her living it out, yeah. you know, I mean, just that day in, day out, like she said, one day at a time and, and mm -hmm. continuing to look to God's word. Um, I think whether you're believing for a, a miracle of, of God healing somebody of birth effects or even maybe just something small or a financial provision or whatever. Right. Um, it's, it's just so, so encouraging and, um, love how she, uh, she touched on to just that, um, are knowing the Lord and mm. that he's the healer and, you know, having that full confidence in him, yeah. you know, uh, just super, super encouraging. And, mm. uh, again, like if you're, whatever you're trusting the Lord for, that can really speak to you and, and encourage you, um, to, to hang on, to keep persevering. Cause that's, right. that's all a part of our faith journey. Yeah. We want to, you know, a lot of Christians are, are aware of when their faith is being tested, mm -hmm. but I love her mindset of victory that I'm going to pass those tests of faith. Mm -hmm. I'm not just going to sit around and get beat up. Uh, I'm going to have this um, aggressiveness of applying the Word of God mm -hmm. to every situation mm -hmm. because we know uh, that the God's will of God, he, he, Jesus teaches us to pray the will of God be done on the earth, mm -hmm. even as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. um, and so Jesus brought the power and the authority of heaven to the earth. And we know that there's coming a day when there won't be any battles mm -hmm. there, there that this will all be over and there'll, there'll be a full manifestation of the kingdom of God. Um, but right now, even while we're waiting on that full manifestation of the kingdom, that the kingdom is available. And so let's not fall short and slack on the things that are available to us now, just because we want to kick back and wait till Jesus mm -hmm. makes it easy on mm -hmm. us, you know, mm -hmm. because we know that these kids uh, need mm -hmm. someone to fight for, for them. them. And they're, they're worth it. And, and why is healing only for people with bad knees and bad backs and colds right. and sniffles or and even cancers? With cancer. it, yeah. You know, healing has to be something that is found in the heart of God. Mm -hmm. And if it's in, and if it over and over, we see Jesus said he healed them all. He right. healed all who had need of healing. Uh, and so he healed people that were born with conditions. Uh, let's not uh, fight Believe against it. that, but right. let's go after mm -hmm. everything that Jesus made right. available. Mm -hmm. Who, you know, we, we have a good foundation in the word. If Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. Right. So uh, let's go after this thing. And each one of us, whether you're fighting for somebody with that condition or others, we can uh, take encouragement from that that steadfastness of, you know what? Uh, this is, I, what, this is what God's word says. This is what's going to happen. happen. <laughs> right, right. So, brothers and sisters, we're so glad that you can join us. It's encouragement for us that uh, that you would take time out of your day. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, what subjects and, uh, you know, are there people that you want us to talk with and bring on the show? Or are there subjects that you want us to tackle that we haven't tackled? Uh, we would love to hear from you. Uh, we have a Facebook group, the Sons and Daughters Podcast Group. And uh, uh, this podcast is available on all podcast platforms that we know of. Apple, mm -hmm. Google, Spotify, Our Heart Radio, Pond, Pandora. Dora, all the good ones. So if you uh, if you can't find us, it's because you're not looking. Um, and then we have additional resources available at our website, fullspeedimpact.com. We have an online mentoring program called the Full Speed Impact Academy. We'd love for you to, to check that out if that's something that you're interested in. It's a deeper, uh, more systematic equipping uh, to take you really soup to nuts uh, so that you can be uh, fully equipped to minister and to walk in the kingdom. 
So we appreciate you being with us, and we will uh, be releasing another podcast next Friday at noon once a week. Uh, Until then, walk in the fullness of Jesus Christ and go out and impact your world.